Teddy Hart, thanks for being here today. All right. Appreciate you guys having me. Um, yeah, this is, uh, it's a pleasure to come in here and get to talk to my fans. I've, I've stated this from uh, basically the beginning of my career that I, I think the fans are uh, unappreciated in wrestling and uh, the, the few things that I, I think you can make a, a big difference and be remembered as a legend is being very honest and uh, concise and uh, accurate with the stories and depictions of uh, what had happened. And when you do these interviews, a lot of guys I find are, are full of shit or they're, they're talking about stuff uh, with trying to get a job. Sure. I told Christian basically that I didn't trust him and I didn't want his help and I didn't want to be part of his group really mm -hmm. because I thought it was fucked up that he came into my hotel room. And uh, it was a weird story, but Tom Pritchard, now that he's gone, he gave me some weed uh, in a pill jar. Pritchard gave it to you? Gave it to me because he knew I was fucking, I couldn't sleep without it. I, I don't smoke weed anymore, finally, but I could never get off the fucking weed. Now, what, was, now was that, ba that couldn't have been based on your talent. Was that based on your personal life? They never life? watched me wrestle, really. Oh. Brett was so busy, he never hung out with his own kids. He was so busy at that time, and he was, he had to deal with, his wife and him were having marital problems based on shit that, he, that was going on, especially when Brett got called out by Sean with the sunny, sunny. day shit. That was... And Julie wasn't stupid, and Julie was one of the greatest uh, wrestling wives you could ever have. And What's I, he having an affair with Sonny? I did. Steve Carino. This is when I. This is when Steve Carino was there, trying really hard to get a job. And I guess, from what his story was, uh, I was a fucking ungrateful piece of shit who got the golden opportunity that they all wished and dreamed and prayed for to feed their fucking families, and I pissed it away, and it, it made him fucking talk shit about me in a shoot interview with Rob, and uh, I ended up fucking. <coughs> Asking Rob when I came to the show uh, that I came only to beat up Steve Carino. Wow. Because he called me a goof. And a goof goof means fucking some pretty serious shit uh, in, in my circle of friends. And right. I just remember fucking fans cheering, climbing up. Somehow a finish happened. I don't even know what it was. I now I know it was Trent Acid getting the fucking... And, uh, whatever uh Logan DeVito. Logan DeVito but I don't remember any of it and I just remember going up over and over and over again and then thinking fuck the fans are so happy and then you watch me puke and I puke in the ring after doing all the backflips off the cage and you see Rob come out and a bunch of guys I could tell they'd sent him out like get your guy the fuck out of the ring right and I could th so I knew the heat was on I didn't know what I did wrong though until I got in the back and then that shit started and that's what I always had a problem with Samoa Joe because he, he was talking shit saying Teddy Hart throws pillows I fucking I would have kicked his ass I said man there's all these guys there not one guy had the balls to do shit but bitch behind my back and they're all throwing the bags out of the locker room type of gimmick because we'd already done that gimmick like as a as a gimmick of like if Teddy Hart's at a show well because the WWE they knew some of the guys knew that my bags had been stolen back then and basically thrown in the fucking river or whatever it was. So it was like whoever was there. Is shit, CM Punk just, joining in on this? Fuck, I never even heard CM Punk say a fucking word until I get home and I, get, I hear this CM Punk is the enforcer and if he sees you, he's going to fucking throw down with you right away. And the only reason I give CM Punk this type of respect, all those fucking pussies had a chance to fucking step outside with me on many different shows over the years. And not one guy said shit when we're fucking one-on-one -on -one in a fucking room, me and you in a hotel room, or walking to the lobby, or down at a vending machine, or checking into a hotel, or we're... CM Punk, first thing he did, he said, when I see him, we're going to fight. And he tried to... De I see, he was, he's a sneaky fucking guy, man. He's a smart motherfucker. Made millions of dollars playing the angles and calling shit out. And he took a page out of Teddy Hart's book. Because he watched and studied, but he always said, oh, there was no controversy, no conspiracy against Teddy Hart. And it's like, dude, what, what moves didn't I do off the top rope, off the top of a fucking 20-foot cage, onto fucking the ground with no pads? What audience ever got more hyped up over watching you steal Kenta's shit? Right. Seriously, what moves did you ever do? Fucking that the fans were on their feet, electric, going fucking crazy, going R O H, R O H. You had some good matches that were fed to you. If you don't bring in those Japanese guys for Joe and fucking uh, CM Punk to wrestle, I'm telling you, I haven't seen a really good CM Punk match until he got to WWE, and even those matches I thought were kind of slow. Right. Like, they were okay, but it wasn't Shawn Michaels. If you watch the pop I got in the Murphy Rec Center, CM Punk knew I'd already fucking eaten his lunch. He was done. 
he was done. And so I'd already got the fucking pop and Gabe brought me in as his guy. So fucking CM Punk is a politicking fucking master. And he's a, he's a fucking smart dude. He saw the writing on the wall. And AJ Styles, I'm going to say it, saw the writing on the wall too, that there's now another guy up there that's doing the same shit AJ Styles can do, but even cleaner. He got fucking two shots. I hit him twice. And that was, he crumbled. And he tries to go for a double leg. And I told this story like five times, but again, it's one of those things. And the, my natural reaction was when he went to double leg, I grabbed his hair and I spun around his face and I was going to take my fingers and stick them as far up his nose and rip his fucking nose off his face. Right. I'll take any bump in the ring you want to drop me off my fucking head. Or do whatever you want to me or Jack. You step into the street. There is no game anymore. It's fucking do or die. And you got one chance to make a reputation. And that was like, so I was very mad and very upset. And Sabu, I think, saved CM Punk's career because I was going to fucking kill him for that, for doing that. And I don't think you would have ever heard about CM Punk doing the MMA. You would have never heard about him being one of the greatest wrestlers in WWE. And I put him over as one of the greatest entertainers overall playing the game. For the time he had while he was in there, that guy was a fucking king. Right. And I give him this, and this is, you have to hear the whole video. You can't just cut a part of it out and make it sound like I hate CM Punk. I don't. No. He's a fucking stud. The guy turned out to be a fucking stud. Had a lot more charisma than I originally thought he did. Took a fucking weird little angle and niche and built it into a fucking mega superstar that became a millionaire in wrestling. And gave him all the props in the world for being the first guy to have the balls to step outside and fucking challenge me to a fight. It's a new lifestyle. It's, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to understand what guys like Steve Carino were saying that Teddy Hart lost a, 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 a fucking, an opportunity that we would kill for. I didn't realize that his opportunity, he wasn't born into this family. He didn't have a smart dad who was a businessman who saved money. He didn't have a mansion or a gym. He had nothing. So maybe I did fuck up his opportunity. Maybe I made it harder for guys to get a job. Was I doing it on purpose? No. Was I trying to be malicious? No. I was a fucking kid, guys, who was basically smoking a lot of weed, living the fucking fantasy of that somehow, some way, someday, because of the cool moves I did, the WWE is going to be able to sign me and I'd eventually get a job on TV and then I could tell my story and people would love me and then I could do my animal activist stuff, my charity work, work with hospitals, sick kids, cancer, all the stuff John Cena does. That's what I stand for. Why do you think I stand for that? Because if you watch my videos, that's why I killed myself. Because this wasn't actually in the magazine. It was on RollingStone.com. That is some fucking heavy bullshit. I want to feel like suing those motherfuckers, dude. Too that's much. not what they said at all. That was never... So they're now taking... Did they decide to write the actual facts? I don't even know the case. I heard about it, but I don't let's, know. Can you read well, that one more time to me? Because let's well, let this... Because I like to, I like let, when I can defend this now. Let me take it from the top, and then we'll hey, go Omar, from there. Hey, Omar, please have enough balls if you're going to write this, because you just wrote a fucking book, my friend, and this is something you should listen to. Please have enough balls if you're going to out me like that, and then go behind my back, and then take an interview from my wife, and Kurt and Fred, fuck you guys for being cowards and letting that go down, because you know the truth. That wasn't even close. My wife owned an escort agency and decided to take calls on her own because we couldn't afford the bills because her business was run improperly while I was in Mexico working for Conan. She got fucking raided for not filling out proper paperwork on her escort agency, which was a legal entity. Business ran in Alberta with a license, LLC license, which she hired her mom, who was fucking doing stupid shit, drug addict, and her idiot brother, who wasn't even her brother, some guy she called her brother, who were running the agency into the fucking ground because my wife couldn't get off GHB because she was doing crystal meth for 10 years before I met her and I cleaned her up and got her off of meth because it wasn't a drug I did. And my wife was using marijuana and GHB to substitute. If we're going to really have this one out, then fucking, again, I did this for, I, I didn't want to do this because I just did it for the kayfabe.com shit. Well, I, I, and it's not my it's, intention. You, I am you not have looking. to. It, I did not know they said that. That is not what was written in the article that I fucking already got blasted for. I, I'm expecting this great article to come out about the comeback, resurrection of Teddy Hart's career, a little bit about these charges, which were bogus and everybody knew it. Otherwise, guess what? I'm going to fucking jail for it. That's heavy shit. Right. That's the like double rape charge. That's what they said. The double rape confinement. That's 10 years, man. Right. Minimum. So Question is, was he convicted? 
Fuck no. After that, done. Game over. Don't bring it up again. Well, you thought you raped some girl. A judge and jury in Canada didn't believe it happened. I beat the charges. I got acquitted. I beat the... the, the, the done. That's the society that's we the live in. That's the fucking answer but because that's, that's the truth. But that's the society we live in. That's what people want to do. They want to glom on to controversy. Then because- fucking glom on while you can, but you got to fix the ending, which is the truth. If the ending is the guy dies, then the ending is the guy dies. Owen Hart story. There's a movie and all of a sudden you got Owen Hart walking down the street with his kid. It's, people go, what the fuck? It's supposed to be based on a true story. Owen Hart died in the ring. What's he? Why are you spinning it and having him walk down the street with his kid? It's not a reality. It's not a true. Sh- it's, not, it's not true. Rolling Stones isn't some fantasy fucking book where it's like fucking Game of Thrones right. shit where you're bringing guys back to life and they got potions and stuff. That's reality, man. If I raped the girl, then, then I got convicted. I'm doing 10 years in fucking jail. Teddy Hart's a fucking even bigger fuck up than what they said I was. And I'm a, and I'm a fucking moron for, for doing that. I was just about to put my wife over. And say how cool she was and how much money she spent and how nice she was. And I, she must have went, to, they must have went back to her after. And it's like, sort of like what's been happening your whole life, even going back to the Pritchard slap. But yeah. then, from, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's sort of the same. Like you've been, uh, these, these things have come out. I mean, maybe self-inflicted some and maybe not. But it seems that uh, you're misunderstood and for pretty much have been a victim not to not to apologize for you because I'm sure you brought a lot of stuff on yourself too, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that as a kid you really never got to deal with or handle, and you never really had anybody looking out for you. And you had to raise yourself, and uh, you in in difficult situations you could turn to no one. So the way you turned out now, I think you should be pretty damn proud. I ask you guys to vouch for me one more time, and if I don't fucking fulfill my obligations to my fans this time. Make sure it's because it actually happened. It's not just something that was swerved on the internet. And now you guys have that at your fingertips where it's the truth and it's the absolute actions of the man that should judge the fucking life of what he gets, the life sentence. If I'm getting a life sentence of no fucking chance in wrestling history, am I ever going to make any money? And I'm getting the death penalty, basically. The Teddy Hart character right now is up for the death penalty. Basically cut out of wrestling history. Never, ever in the Hall of Fame, not a chance. Never got to do a pay-per-view in North America. Never got to sell a t-shirt or never got to have a wrestling doll. Never got to be in a video game except for a hidden character. Basically, just a guy on YouTube. As I said years ago, you watch on YouTube and go, fuck, I'm going to steal a couple of that guy's moves. Or holy shit, I didn't realize how long he's been doing that stuff. I see a lot of these kids come up now. And I see them, and they walk up to me like I used to walk up to Sabu. Like, fuck, man. And I, I forget, i am now been wrestling for 17, 18 years, and guys come up, and they're very nice to me and very humble. And they say, man, you taught us so much shit, and you always did stuff so clean. So that was like, that's like my kind of reward that even if I don't get the job, and I don't get in WWE, and I don't get uh, exonerated for a lot of stuff that was put out there as this is what happened when it didn't. And you just have to listen long enough to watch or to check and do your fact searching of never happened, didn't happen, didn't happen. If it did happen, I would beat it, proved it. I think you're young enough where some of your story's been written, but one of the most important parts of your story hasn't been written, and that's the end. 